What up, gang? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Reunion Part 2. So we begin where we left off last week with Giselle's segment. Um, you know, her daughter went off to college and her father unfortunately got sick with brain cancer and passed away. And uh, she's dating a former Summer House cast member, Jason. So when it comes to Giselle laughing about Wendy's mom being in the hospital, because remember, Wendy was like, she couldn't really feel sorry for, or not feel sorry for uh, Giselle, but she really didn't sympathize with her because when her mama was in the hospital having surgery, she laughed at her mom. So Giselle was like, before we even get to any of the other stuff, I want to clarify that that's a bold faced lie that Wendy said I laughed at her mom. And Wendy was like, you did laugh at my mom. You were on the phone with Jason or somebody and you said that my mom was evil. So Giselle's argument is I didn't know that she was in the hospital. So you can't say that I was laughing at her. Well, potato, potato. At the end of the day, neck bone, you had no business even bringing up that woman's mama in the first place. Mamas, husbands, kids, whatever. I thought that was supposed to have been off limits, gizzard. You had no business talking about that lady mama, calling her evil. What has that woman done to you? Nothing, nothing. She's never said, Wendy has never said anything derogatory about your mother, your father, anything. So you're dead wrong for saying what you said. It shouldn't have been said at all. And the fact that you got an attitude says a lot. Like I'm trying to figure out how you sitting up on this couch with Joe shoulders all up and you doing all of this mad when you're the culprit Eveline that hell forget on my goddamn nerves I cannot with Giselle it's like the fuck is wrong with you go take a Xanax or something my god so then we get to talking about her father passing away god rest her father's soul that did make me tear up you know we don't ever want to see anything bad happen to anybody's parent. And that's the only time we see Giselle have a genuine moment is when she's talking about her family. Other than that, that is a stone cold killer. Other than that, that heifer don't give a damn about shit while she calling somebody evil. You're the devil, okay? You really truly are. And sitting next to you is Lucifer's nutsack. <laughs> So Candace Starr is crying, you know, during the segment about Giselle's father and Giselle was pissed off because the attention was not on her and it was on that other couch. See, she was sitting up there with that neck. It's supposed to be about me. Girl, I was like, yeah, she cries even when it's not about her. Now she wrong for having a genuine moment where she feels bad about your parent dying. Anybody with a soul would have teared up. I don't even like you and I teared up. Like, girl, get over yourself. Then she want to get mad at Karen for saying that everybody make faces at everybody at some point. And that's the truth. So it's about my daughter. It was about my daughter. Girl, that would die for deal. Don't nobody care about that little girl. Oh, we. So, if she did make a face, and what you gonna do about it? Nothing. But sit up there with your swollen cankles and be mad and just sit up there. Girl, get over yourself. Like, are you the only one with a daughter? Oh, she get on my nerves. So, Candace says that Giselle weaponizes her children, and she 1,000% does. Sometimes I don't weaponize my children. Yes, you do. You did it with Wendy talking about you looked at my daughter with a cock-eyed eye or whatever she said. That lady did bit more look at that little girl. What she want to look at her for? What Grace got going on that she really care about? Nothing. She country just like you. So then Wendy says, 
that she, in fact, did congratulate um, Jizzy on her daughter going away to college, going to an HBCU, and asked if she was going to pledge a sorority because you know Wendy's in a sorority as well. And Giselle Thompson, that didn't happen. That's a lie. That didn't happen because if it would have happened, it would have been on camera. And Candace was like, that did happen. I was there. I remember. So Wendy was like, thank you, girl. I don't think that Wendy would even sit up there and lie and say that. Because what is that gaining her? It's not gaining her a, a bigger paycheck. Okay, any brownie points. Why would she lie about that? We know that you're a liar. Okay. Wendy has never been known as a liar. Okay. You have. So Candace segment is next. You know, she had breast issues. Thankfully, we find out that um, the tumor they found in her breast, it ended up shrinking on its own. She didn't have to do anything about it. You know, she's working on her career. She was still promoting Fast Forward, Rewind, whatever that name of that song is. Um, Parallel Park, whatever it is, child. Uh, and her and Chris were still trying to do this thing with having a baby. So that was her season. Right. And then, you know, the, the, the lawsuit from Michael and her deteriorating friendship with Robin and her hatred for Gizzard. Candace says that the reason why she didn't want Drew from Real Housewives of Atlanta to open up for her again is because they don't do business the same. So it seemed from the way that she told the story, like Drew t tried to poach somebody that she worked with and didn't come to her about it. So it kind of left a bad taste in her mouth. And I was like, Ooh, we got beef. Now, you know, during next Bravo con doing squash the beef, they going to put Drew and Candace up there together. That's going to be awkward, but I can't wait. <laughs> Cause I'm here for the mess. Then we have Andy say to Robin, did you feel like she was coming for your job? You know, with the things that Candace was saying online about her. And Robin was like, yeah, it was coming across that way. So Robin says that she was in fact offended by the white adjacent comment that she made to Giselle. Now, if I remember correctly, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. She was talking to Giselle. I don't remember her saying anything about Robin being white adjacent or anything like that. I remember those words being directly to Giselle when she was going off going off on Giselle. Remind me if I'm wrong or anything. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Robin took offense to that. It hurt her deeply. Okay. Candace says that after the reunion, she reached out to Robin about her hair being long or cute or whatever. And Robin responded back with a white adjacent snarky comment. And Candace was like, are you mad at me? She never responded. Two months later, when the stuff about Juan came out, she reached out again and was like, hey, I just want to say, you know, I'm sorry for whatever you're going through with your family. Robin didn't respond again. So at that point, she was like, oh, she feels some type of way. You know what I'm saying? And then the whole payola thing with the Patreon and all of that really set her off. And that's what made her mad and go to social media. So, um... Was she wrong for going to social media about everything that was going on? No, because it was show related. So I don't think that Candace was wrong in that area um, because we supposed to be grown women. You always want to talk about if something going on, come to me. I ask you, do you got an attitude? You don't respond. I reach out to you again. You don't respond and all this, that, and the third. Like, girl, get your life. You need to be happy this girl even care enough to even want your friendship. Because I wouldn't have gave two f's about you not answering me the first time. I wouldn't have reached out to you ever again. You ain't never got to worry about me. How you going to get mad at a texting you? She texts you more than your f do. I bet you Juan don't even give a f if you answer his text or not. She probably got more feelings for you than Juan do. Candace fought more for y'all relationship, y'all friendship than we ever seen Juan do. Girl, you need to be holding on to that heifer. <laughs> Real talk. Why you sitting up there with your shoulder on your neck? <laughs> that ain't even make no sense. 
That's how much she get on my nerves, child. So Robin tries to get emotional and says that she's never been accused of colorism before and that that conversation for her is just uncomfortable and it really upset her. And it took for these two comments I saw on Twitter tonight. One girl said, not a light-skinned woman with green eyes feeling uncomfortable about a conversation about colorism. Yikes. R-H-O-P will never beat these colorism allegations. Hmm. Then someone else said, the fact that Robin could have gone her whole life without having a colorism convo until getting on this platform is a prime example of colorism. Dark skinned people don't get that luxury. And that's the guy's honest truth. Why does it make you so uncomfortable? Why? Why does it make you so uncomfortable to have a conversation about race, skin complexion, the uh, the differences between light skin and dark skin. Why does that make you so uncomfortable? Rem oh, maybe it's because that first season you just, I am black. I am not mixed with anything. And then come to find out you're 53% European. Girl, you're mixed. Face it, whether you want to admit it or not, you and Giselle have privileges that other black people do not have and Karen and Mia and Ashley and that's okay to admit that and I, I'm, I'm saying this to Karen too because Karen be trying to skip over the subjects too sometimes you know what I'm saying y'all have advantages that other women of color and men of color do not have you're more accepted in spaces in this world that most black people are not. You're treated differently. And whether you or the other lighter, fairer skinned women on that stage want to admit it, but there is a biasness when it comes to y'all skin complexion and how y'all treat others. Y'all treat Candace. And Wendy like dogs. But then a lighter skinned person on the cast can do something that a darker skinned person has already done. And it's okay. I don't see anything wrong with it. Why? Because I don't like her. So mm, I don't think that that person did anything wrong. That's, that's, that's not right. <laughs> no, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. So... <sighs> Giselle says that she doesn't have a problem talking about colorism because she was in a sorority and she went to a HBCU child. What the f does that have to do with the price of tea in China that you pledged and went to a HBCU? Those things have nothing to do with colorism. You could go to a all black everything. That don't mean that you cannot be colorist. Or featurist. What about that? Don't you understand, you dimwit? Please get them to off of this show because having them on this show is so toxic. Oh my God, it makes my head hurt. It makes my soul bleed, these two. Oh my God, they're so stupid. It took for Wendy to say, everyone here does not have the range to talk about colorism. And I was like, bitch, you better speak a word. Okay? Speak a word. Speak a word. If y'all want to do anything, if y'all keep this same cast next season, which I'm hoping and praying that you do not. But the best thing that could come out of Potomac is if y'all have somebody that has uh, went to school studied whatever come in and literally throughout the whole season have group meetings about colorism and the biasness in this cast so some shit can really get spoken about that should be what this show is about next season along with everything else yes that would be good television because there's a lot of people on that stage that just refuse to get it, don't get it, don't want to get it. It needs to be some therapizing going on. Y'all need to have a therapist to come in there to talk about actual assault. 
Mm-hmm. Because half of that cast has dealt with it. The allegations that Giselle said about Chris and the implications and how that carries in a person's life. The physical altercations that have happened on this show. It all needs to be discussed and talked about. If y'all gonna keep this cast, which I'm like I said, I hope, pray y'all don't. Anywho, so NECA backstage plans on speaking up because she needs to get her voice heard. And I'm like, girl, I hope you don't even come back next season. So whatever you trying to get up off your chest, girl, it really don't matter because we don't care. We really don't care. Um, Her husband was like, uh, he might have to speak up for her. She was like, don't you speak up for me. She said, uh, if you speak up to me, speak up for me, you might as well go wherever Juan Dixon is. And I was like, shade. But you all up in Robin in them face. I bet you Robin and get an attitude about that child. I bet you she do. So the husbands minus Juan, of course, joined the ladies on stage. But then I thought about it and I was like, Robin does have her mate there with her. Giselle. Giselle is her husband. We all know they are in a homosexual relationship. <laughs> Who y'all think the top and who y'all think is the bottom? Because both of them bitches are manly, okay? I think they um, are verse. I think that they both, I think they take turns with each other. You know what I'm saying? With the strap on. I really honestly do. So Andy questions Chris about this woman that came out months ago saying that she'd had an affair with him, got pregnant, had an abortion and all of these different things. And then the lady came back a week or so later saying that it wasn't true. Then she came back again saying it was true. And so Andy was like, what was going on with that? And he was like, I don't know. I've never met this woman a day in my life. Here go Robin jumping in. So what about the screenshots? Chris said, I've never met this person. But so she photoshopped the pictures of I've never met this person, like I just said. So she was lying because you know she came back and said, Did you hear this nigga say <laughs> that he don't know who the fuck she is? And you of all people don't need to be questioning nobody's husband about what they doing when your own husband couldn't even show up for your You got more questions for Chris than you did your own. And he was caught red handed He actually went to a mother Hotel and paid for another room And you sitting up there talking about he did it out The goodness of his heart cause he's such a great Samaritan but you can't ask nobody About it You better be glad Chris wasn't an actual Black man cause anybody else would have been like Bitch who the f*** you talking to Worry about your own mother husband Who the f*** you talking to Sit back and relax shoulders Girl, Robin can kiss a, ooh, kiss a So Giselle did get smart with Chris about everything that happened last season. And I'm like, once again, how you got an attitude and you the one that accused this man of doing inappropriate things. Explain to me how you're mad. Ooh, she is rotten to the core. She is literally rotten to the core. That is a bitter, bitter. If I've ever seen one in my life And it feels so good to be able to say it again Because Giselle is the worst All that I said what I said dead. You can enunciate each word all the f*** you want It's still not going to change that you are rotten You are spoiled milk So then Andy says um Ask the husbands how they feel about Juan not being there. And they was all like, oh, I don't want no parts of that. But G was like, you know, I ain't trying to be disrespectful or anything, but I came here to support my wife. I mean, my ex-wife. And then the episode ends with him beginning to tell whatever they're going through. But we don't get to see that until next week. It goes off. Child. Robin and Giselle ain't gonna worry me and get my blood pressure up. Okay, I still gotta go watch WrestleMania, uh, part two. Okay, I ain't got time for this. I really, honestly don't. They are the wicked witches of the East and the West. I cannot stand them. Please get them off my screen. I just can't do it another season. I really can't. I'm gonna give a uh, reunion part two. <sighs> a B minus 
If you didn't watch my best and worst moments from reunion part one, the video is up right now on my YouTube channel. I will be doing a best and worst moments from reunion part two this week as well. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you have not joined, um, Patreon for my YouTube audience, please do so. You will get to see the unedited, raw, uncut version of this review. And if you join my second tier on Patreon, the $10 tier, you'll not only get my uncut re reviews, but my uncut reaction videos. This past week, I reacted to Glorilla and Megan The Stallion's video, J. Cole's Seven Minute Drill Disc to Kendrick Lamar, um, trailers for upcoming television shows. And this week, I'll be actually uh, watching and catching up on the most recent episodes of BMF with you guys. So make sure that you join either tier on Patreon.